Welcome back, this is Part-Time Guardian. In this video, I'm gonna talk about an incredible build that you can use in any endgame PvE content for your Warlock. Again, if you find value in this video, feel free to subscribe to my channel and also head into the Discord community so we can talk about future videos. I really appreciate it. So this build is, again, primarily built around the abilities of Shadebinder on the Warlock. And in most endgame content, let's say Grandmasters or things where you're trying not to die very quickly, right? You're trying to survive as long as possible. Being able to freeze your opponents, but also to not take as much damage and to be resistant to damage is really, really good in content like that. So this build, I'm basically calling freeze tag because you're gonna be freezing a lot of stuff. And let's get into the details. So let's talk about the armor. So first off, we're gonna begin with the head armor. And for this particular build, I'm gonna use Dynamo, which reduces your super cooldown when you use your class ability near an enemy. A grenade launcher ammo fighter, because a lot of my build for this one is gonna be around grenade launchers. Again, depending on the tick of content, if you need to use something else, like a hand cannon or something else, feel free to use something else here. And then shield break charge. I, that doesn't have any particular value, except that I wanted something that had a low amount of points left over so I could spend points on other things on that piece of armor. And it's useful if you are running something where you actually take down the shield that's matching the, the weapon you're using, and then you can get a charge of light. So that I, that's the reason I'm running that. Next on the arms, I'm running Unstoppable Grenade Launcher, which is from the season, and it's particularly expensive. anti bear Scout Rifle, because again, you could switch out that um, what the other mod that you're using, but Anti-Barrier is gonna be useful in almost every GM or other content that you're running. And then Blast Radius. So because when I get to my weapons, I'm gonna be using a lot of things around grenade launchers. If I do rapid kills, I actually get Charges of Light, which again feeds into different portions of my build. Since again, I'm trying to live as long as possible, on my chest, I use Sniper Damage Resistance and Concussive Dampener. Now you could, you could change these out. You could even do double one of these depending on what the GM is, or what the Lost Sector, what thing you're trying to survive in. But again, this is what I generally use. And I'm using Protective Light. So Protective Light is the core of where the Charges of Light go in this build. And again, for those of you who aren't aware, Protective Light, basically, if you get to the point where your shield comes down and you're about to die, it'll actually give you extended resistance for a period of time and basically stop you from being one-shot in certain scenarios. The more Charges of Light you have, the longer that effect lasts after you get shot and almost die. On my legs, I'm going to run Innervation, which again reduces your grenade cooldown when you pick up orbs. And you'll be getting those from anything like supers or if you have a lot of mass work weapons, which I'll be using in this build, you'll get those from that. And again, the grenade cooldown will come in handy later. Also, I'd use for my, for the weapons I'm using, I'm gonna be using grenade launcher scavenger. Again, sub that out if you're using a different weapon. And then I'm using charged up. Charged up, again, just for the burn that I have on this particular armor, allows me to get an additional stack of light, which again, helps me with my protective light that I used earlier in the build. On my class item, I'm using blast radius. Again, those stack. So what this allows me to do is when I get a couple of rapid hits, instead of getting one charge of light, I get two, which again, just lets me get up there really quickly. I'm using Glacial Inheritance, which when I get kills with my super, that's stasis, I get super energy back. And if you time this correctly, you can basically get about half of your super back pretty quickly. And then finally, I'm running Energy Accelerant. And for those of you who are familiar with some of my other builds, like the previous one I did for this season with my Hunter, the Energy Accelerant allows you, when you have Dragonfly, Chain Reaction, or Firefly on a weapon, for it to have greater effect. And again, there's a ton of those weapons out there, so it really comes in handy. And it can do a ton of extra damage. The other thing I forgot to mention on my boots for this particular build is I'm gonna run Boots of the Assembler. And so the reason I'm doing that is because again, I'm trying to stay as, as alive as long as possible. And one of the key things about this piece of armor is that again, it's exotic. You get it from running Lost Sectors. But the key thing with it is that while you're standing in a rift, what's going to happen is while you're staying in a rift, you're gonna have Noble Seekers, kind of like what happens on Lumina, that go out and heal your teammates if they're not standing in a rift. And while that's happening, it extends the duration of rift. So again, it allows you to have Rift even longer, which again, in these end game content where you're really underpowered and you might die, that comes in very helpful. Next, again, I'm, I'm running Shade Binder, okay? So not really for the super, but for some of the interaction of some of the elements. So again, I'm running Healing Rift. I'm gonna run a Cold Snap Grenade, even though you'll find out later, it doesn't really matter what type of grenade I run. I'm running Bleak Watcher, which allows you to do the turret. So if you basically consume your grenade and then 
chuck it out there. It will make a little ice turret that will continuously um, freeze opponents, which again comes in extremely handy. And then I'm also wanting ice flare bolts, which again, as you shatter, it's going to send out seekers that freeze and then potentially shatter other opponents. So again, really helpful when you have a lot of ads and some sort of big PVE content. Now, where I really get interesting is some of the fragments I'm running. Now, I've played around with different one of these. Um, you guys can obviously play around, tweak this. This is what I've come up for this season for what I think you know, synergizes well. So I'm running Whisper of Bonds, which allows you to get super energy from frozen enemies that you defeat. Okay, again, allows me to get my super quicker. Whisper of Shards. When you shatter frozen enemies, you get grenade energy back. So you'll notice as we're talking through this, a lot of the things I put on this build are around getting grenade energy back. Because again, I'm using Bleak Watcher. The whole point of this is to be able to continuously get that turret up to automatically freeze your opponents. I'm also running Whisper of Torment, which gets you grenade energy when you're taking enemy damage. And this is completely ridiculous in a piece of uh, content like this, like a Grandmaster or something like that, because you're always going to be hit by something. So again, just think about that. You're constantly getting grenade energy, so you should be able to constantly get those turrets up. And then Whisper of Chains, which while you're near frozen targets, you get reduction in, in damage. So this is similar, again, to the other build that I was talking about earlier, where you get damage resistance for a period of time by picking up elemental wells. But in this case, just standing next to frozen targets, which they're going to be all over the place, you're going to get damage resistance. So again, you're seeing a lot of things in here about keeping yourself healed, keeping your fire team healed, and then also freezing enemies constantly, which while they're frozen, your whole fire team can be picking them off and taking them out. Finally, for guns, again, this is going to depend on what type of, of content you're running. If it's a GM and you have different, you know, overload versus barrier versus other things, you may have to switch out some of the guns, but for this, and I also know when you see the guns I'm going to use, they're very arc focused, and that's just by coincidence because these are the ones I want to use. You could sub those out for other burns or other things, again, depending on the content you're in. But again, this synergizes really well. So first off, I'm just running a scout rifle, in this case, Nightwatch. This is just because anti-barrier, they're barrier champions in every GM content, every content that has champions always has barriers so i always keep a scout rifle plus it's a it's a good long range weapon that you can use when you're trying to hide basically then i'm using salvager salvo so one of the main reasons i'm using this is it has configurable perks one of those is demolitionist so as i'm getting kills i get grenade energy back again get the point grenade energy constantly being able to put those turrets up and then also get chain reaction so again since i'm building out a lot of what i'm doing around things like energy accelerant and things that work off of similar to Firefly and Chain Reaction sort of buffs. Because I'm using Chain Reaction on this, when I put it out there, it's going to do additional damage against enemies. So again, that really comes in helpful. And then finally, I'm running Anarchy. So again, Anarchy, I know not everyone gets it. I think at this point, even if, you know, I know Scourge is gone, you can't get it. It's pretty easy at this point to find a group to do farms to get spoils so you can buy it. So again, if you're in any end game content like this, you need Anarchy. Primary reason is because it can do damage while you're hiding, while you're doing other things, right? Again, just like your turrets, it's like an automated defense system for yourself. You should always, if, you, if you're going to run this content, if you're going to get serious about that, even if you're a part-time guardian, make sure you're getting Anarchy. It's well worth it. But again, the whole point of Anarchy is that it will do damage over time. The other thing is with some of the mods that we're talking about, like with Blast Radius, you're going to constantly be getting charges of light. So again, it just comes in well. And because I have all those things around Grenade Launcher, sca Scavenger, that works for both of those weapons. The other thing is, if you have Unstoppables, then you also get the Grenade Launcher ability to take those Unstoppables down without using a different weapon. So you can use, the, you can use your Special as well as you can use your Power Weapon. So again, I like that for that reason. So then pulling it all together, really this build is primarily focused again around protecting you protecting your fire team, and freezing everything in sight. In fact, I thought about maybe we could run this with like three, you know, like if you go into a Grandmaster running three of these, you would never have anything ever be able to come up and do any damage to you because if you situate your turrets correctly, you'd just be freezing everything constantly. So again, that's really the value proposition. Obviously, if you are running a Grandmaster with this, you could run a couple people with that, and then you probably do want someone to do burst damage so you could take out uh, things quickly. But again, if you're going to go slow and you're not gonna run really quickly, this is a perfect build to make sure you survive as long as possible. Okay guys, well, again, that's the video. Like I said, I'm building this community on Discord, so if you do have the time, 
feel free to drop by and join the Discord. Link is in the description. Um, I would love to talk about future build, uh, videos or actually talk to you about the success that you're having or get some of your ideas. But again, drop by the Discord, like the video if you really uh, enjoyed it, if it brought value, and subscribe to my channel. Again, I'm going to continue to bring build uh, videos out. I'm approaching 1,000 subscribers, which means I'll be partner soon, which is really exciting for me. But as I do that and I get a little bit more serious about this channel, I really want to make the best videos for you guys. So again, feel free, drop into Discord, subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you guardians in the tower.